Welcome to the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. Say hello to your hosts for the evening, Nicole Byer and Tay Diggs. Yes, yes, yes. You look wonderful. Thank you. You look good too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at all of y'all. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to the Critics' Choice Awards, coming to you live from Los Angeles and London. Yes, a party so big we had to do it on two different continents. Yes. And we are so excited to be your hosts tonight. Yes, because... We love the Critics' Choice Awards, the movies, bam, the TV shows, bow, and of course, the open bar with the shimmy. Come on and shimmy. Hey, you Tay, love the shimmy. Tay, not to interrupt shimmy. your shimmying, but we talked shimmy. about this. There's no singing this year. Don't you remember? I don't, I don't sing. I didn't know you were serious about that. Yes, I was serious. <laughs> We rehearsed for a week. You didn't know that there were no songs? Okay, I thought you were just joking. No, okay. I wasn't. Plus, Billy Crystal's here. What are we going to do? Sing a bunch of songs from nominated movies and try to do Billy Crystal with Billy Crystal in the house? Right, we're definitely not going to do that. Tonight, tonight, it's the Critics' Choice tonight. Hey, Tay, 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 we just talked about that. Anyway, Tay? Look at this gorgeous crowd! Yes, gorgeous crowd. Yes, yes, clap for yourselves! <laughs> yes, the glamour, the opulence, the eligible men. Mm. Yes. Oh, I love it. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nicole. We love you, too. <laughs> Who's we? You said eligible men, so I'm a... Oh! Yes. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> but tonight is not about us. It's about our amazing nominees and recognizing the groundbreaking work they've done over the past year. Give yourselves yes. a hand. Yes. Recognizing them with awards and for a special few, the opportunity to consensually luxuriate in my embrace. Yes. That's mm. not part of the show, Nicole. It's not, but it could be. It could be. Let's find Courtney B. Vance. Where okay. he at? I want to hug. Easy. Easy. Dial it back. Where he at? I would uh, like to uh, honor Jean Smart. Where's she at? All right. We're Ooh. all <laughs> coming for you. Coming for you. I'm sorry. We're all flattered, Nicole. Again, but, oh, who is we? We is everyone at the show here and in London and everyone watching at home from Chicago to West Philadelphia. Born and raised. Will Smith is okay. Uh, hey. 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 I'm sorry. Take it! I'm sorry, Nicole. I'm sorry. Sometimes I just feel the music. It's in my bones. All right. Well, I can't fight it anymore. Do you know the theme from Succession? Do I? Well, hit it. Succession. Really rich white people being really mean to each okay, other. And right, I really like right. that. Or really sarcastic. All right, Tay. All right. All right. I get it. You made up the words. You're good at improv. I get it. Okay, Tay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's get to the awards. Yes. Let's do that. Our mm -hmm. first presenters are two guys who starred in the Critics' Choice Award-winning series, Community, and are now together again on the singing competition show, I Can See Your Voice. Here are from the mass singer, Ken Jong and Joe McHale. Thank you so much. Go Joel ahead. and I are Go ahead. You're okay. Just yeah. Joel and I are here to present the award. Yep. Right. That was oh that was you. Go ahead. Okay. For for best supporting actor and actress in a limited series. Oh, Ken, you know something about limiting a series. <laughs> You've done that a lot. I can I can give you a list. Okay, you know what? That's just that's just triggering me right now. Put that mic down for me a little bit. Thank you very much. Don't go. Don't height shame me. Thank you. Don't. How dare you? My back still hurts from carrying on community all these years. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
You were like the best guest star we ever had. Okay, no. Dude, I ever, was ever. I was a series regular, Joel. Oh, oh, that's 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 right. That's right. No small roles. I mean, you're very small, but that's medical. Okay. Uh, but seriously, you were amazing on all four seasons of Community. Okay, we were on for six. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, but it took you a while to warm up, as it does for most guests on the shows. Yeah, you were coming in. You've never been on a set before. It's not your home. You don't know what the rules are. You just got kicked out of medicine. So, you know, all the inside jokes and Dude, stuff. I had just done The Hangover. Ah, and there we have it, everyone. There we have it. Yep, you just broke your record, Ken. You you waited almost 28 seconds before mentioning The Hangover. Wow, congrats. Can we hear it for Ken? 28 seconds. No, Look at that. That's not... They agree. no time for... A, okay, let's just announce the nominees. Here are... Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor in a Limited Series or Movie Made for Television. Murray Bartlett for The White Lotus. Christian Slater for Dr. Death. William Jackson Harper for the Underground Railroad. Evan Peters for Mayor of Easttown. Zach Guilford for Midnight Mass. And Courtney B. Vance for Genius Aretha. Okay, here we go. And the Critics' Choice Award goes to Murray Bartlett, the White Lotus. Thank you so much. Critics' Choice Association. I'm uh, truly honored. Um, I want to acknowledge my fellow nominees. Um, I think you guys are just uh, extraordinary, and thank you for your amazing performances. I'm, I'm honored to be amongst you. Um, I want to uh, shout out to the mastermind of White Lotus, Mike White. Um, <laughs> Mike, you're, you're a genius, and I adore you. I thank you for taking a giant leap of faith on me in this and for making it so fun. Um, I want to uh, call out to the, the amazing cast of White Lotus. Um, this is a truly ensemble show and I share this with them. Um, I want to thank our amazing producers and our incredible crew, uh, all our producers, all our, um, uh, our people at HBO for your uh, incredible uh, wholehearted support, especially uh, Casey Bloys and Francesca Orsi for um, continuing to champion uh, creative geniuses like Mike White, thank you. Um, I want to thank my amazing team, um, especially uh, Matt, Carolyn, Trevor, and Joan, um, and Alex, uh, and Nicole, you rock. Uh, to my family and friends, uh, thank you so much for your love and support. You uh, sustain me, especially you, Ahmed. And to my partner at home, Matt, uh, you're my anchor, and I love you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or Movie Made for Television. Jennifer Coolidge for The White Lotus. <laughs> Caitlin Deaver for Dope Sick. <laughs> Catherine Hahn for WandaVision. Catherine. Melissa McCarthy for Nine Perfect Strangers. Julianne Nicholson for Mayor of Easttown. And Jean Smart for Mayor of Easttown. And the critic's choice is Jennifer Coolidge, The White Lotus. Oh. 
Uh, Jennifer couldn't be here tonight, so who wants it? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we will accept the award. Uh, Ken will take it home. So uh, <laughs> it looks really big in his hand. So uh, th uh, congratulations, Jennifer. Right on. All right. Uh, Coming up, Ray Romano presents the award for Best Supporting Actress, plus Billy Crystal, Halle Berry, Ralph Macchio, Mandy Moore, the cast of Squid Game, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and so much more when the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards returns. Welcome back. Welcome back. Not only are we live in Los Angeles, we are live in London, England, Nicole. Yes, and to our nominees in London, I say, Ayo, governor! <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on, Nicole. Nobody in England really talks like that. Dick Van Dyke did. Yes. And I love Dick Van Dyke, <laughs> but that's not a great example. Look! I'm expressive with my accent and pronunciation, okay? Which reminds me, if I mispronounce anyone's name, if I say it incorrectly tonight, it's not because I can't read the prompter or like remember names. It's because it's an original NFT that I've made of your name. And you can't prove me wrong because nobody knows what an NFT is. Sure, 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 sure. Our next two awards feature a few of the nominees at the Savoy. So let's give them out right about now. To present the award for Best Supporting Actor is the winner of last year's Best Supporting Actress Award. She won for her role in Borat, subsequent movie film. Here's Maria Bakalova. Hi. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm so thrilled that we can finally be here together in person. <clears throat> um, I'm from Bulgaria, and my home city is just a few hundred. The bravery of the people of Ukraine. who are defending their right to independence and democracy. I truly hope that we will come together and usher in a new era of cultural and artistic exchange between Eastern Europe and Hollywood, which has been a foundational force of creativity in the 20th century. So I hope my message goes to the Ukrainian people we see you, we stand with you, and our hearts are with you. Um, and now, back to celebrating all of you talented people who have given us so much this year. Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor. Best Supporting Actor Jamie Dornan, Belfast I want my family with me I want you Troy Kotzer, Coda Jared Leto, House of Gucci Why did you report me? For copyright breach, <gasps> Gucci is my name too. J.K. Simmons, being the Ricardos. Come with me for a drink. It's 10 a.m. I'm sure it's 10:15 somewhere. Cody Smith McBee, the power of the dog. You used to worry I wasn't kind enough. That I was too strong. Kieran Hines, Belfast. That shouldn't be a problem, so I've been married to Ronnie for 50 years. I've never understood a word you said. And the award goes to Troy Kotzer.
I just, I can't believe it that this is happening the same night. Uh, two birds with one stone, you know what I mean? <laughs> BAFTAs earlier tonight and now Critics' Choice, oh my God. Just, I'm not there in Los Angeles, but my spirit is there with you all and your spirit is with us here in London. So I wanna thank all of you. Thank you all the members of the Critics' Choice Association for really for recognizing my work and the positive message that has really brought us all together tonight to lead me to be here on this stage. And I send you my heart and my love. Thank you so much. Love you all. He's a three-time Emmy winner, nominated tonight for his role in Made for Love. Here's Ray Romano. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Good to be here. And we can see, we see faces. This is it's very exciting. Um, it's been a while. Uh, it's very exciting to be presenting for these exceptional ladies. And uh, if I'm being honest, it's exciting for me to be nominated. It's been a long time. I Yes, I have in a, in a little while. I'm not going to win, but that's not why we're here. That's not... We're not here for that. Actually, I want to do something because seriously, I'm, I'm not going to win. So I want to say right now, now I want to say I love you to my wife who is here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for letting me do that. I'm like most guys. It's much easier. I don't say it enough. I just don't say it. It's much easier uh, during sex. Yeah. <laughs> Or, or acceptance speeches. It's very, yeah. And so I'm glad I said it because I don't think either one of those are going to happen tonight. Um, right? No, we're not. No, no, no. No, it's, I know no. Of course I know no. We already, we had the one for March already. So, yeah. Anyway, let's go. Let's get to the best supporting actresses. <clears throat> this year's Critics' Choice nominees are a diverse array of gifted artists, ranging from a promising newcomer to an iconic EGOT winner. And the one thing they all have in common, I have to say, is they're all kind of badass. Here are the nominees. Best Supporting Actress. Anjanu Ellis. King Richard. What Don't do mistake that? my silence for agreement. You do that again, and I won't be quiet. Katrina Balfe, Belfast. If we go for the road, then people's not gonna understand a word we say. Ariana DeBose, West Side Story. <laughs> Anne Dowd, Mass. It's very hard to trust anything anymore. I raised a murderer. Kirsten Dunst, The Power of the Dog. It was so soft. So beautiful. Rita Moreno, West Side Story. I want to be with you forever. Quiero estar contigo para siempre. And the critic's choice goes to Ariana DeBose. Oh, my word. Um, wow. Uh, this is wild. I wrote some things down, and yet my phone is over there. That's unfortunate. You know, thank you. Thank you uh, to the Critics' Choice uh, Association. Um, critics, you matter. And I'm so, 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 so grateful for your support of West Side Story. Um, there were so many people who questioned whether or not this film should be reimagined. And you rallied around us. You loved on us, every single one of us. And I'm very, very grateful for that. So thank you. Um, to my fellow nominees, you are all so stinking glorious, and I love you so much. Um, you inspire me, and especially uh, one fellow nominee, the great Rita Moreno. You made space for it. Yes, 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 please. Um, 
you seriously, Mama. You made space for me to to thrive beside you. I am not in front of you. I am not behind you. I am beside you, and that's the greatest gift you could have ever given me. Um, you know, the last thing I'm gonna say because you never know who's watching. To all the young people, doesn't matter how you identify or who you are. You are unique. You are talented. You are seen. You are valued. You are you are loved, and you matter. Please don't ever forget that. Thank you so much. Really. Straight ahead, Alan Kim presents the award for Best Young Actor and Actress. And who will take home the award for Best Ensemble? Mandy Moore reveals the winner live when the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards returns. And the critic's choice is Alan Kim Minari. Well, I'd like to thank the critics who voted and my family, Isaac, Christina, Doug. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> He won the Best Young Actor Award last year for his role of David in Minari. Here's Alan Kim. Wow. It's crazy to look at a video of a younger me. I was so emotional and inexperienced. Now, as an older nine-year-old, I'm presenting the same award for a lot of new people. I gotta tell you, growing up in this business is no picnic. Here are the nominees. Jude Hill, Belfast. Amelia Jones, Coda. Cooper Hoffman, Licorice Pizza. Woody Norman, Come On, Come On. Sanaya Sitton, King Richard. Rachel Zegler, West Side Story. And the critic's choice goes to... Jude Hill. I'm gonna have to be completely honest. I had nothing prepared. <laughs> First of all, congrats to all of the other nominees. I loved you all. And yeah, I couldn't have done it without the rest of the cast. Jamie, Katrina, Karen, Ken, Judy Dench, and oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yeah, just Thanks to my mom and dad for always being there and letting me go down this path in the first place. Thanks to my little sister and my little brother, Jonah. And they've actually both been getting into acting as well. Copycats. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been so much, oh my gosh. Uh, thanks to Focus Features and Universal for uh, supporting Belfast. Thanks to the entire cast and crew and of course, the best for last, Sir Kenneth Brana. I love you so much. Thank you for choosing me. She stars in one of television's most loved and honored ensemble dramas. From This Is Us, here's Mandy Moore. Ensemble acting is a lot like making music, of course. There's beauty in just one voice or a single instrument. But when a choir comes together in perfect harmony or 
an orchestra converges for a brilliant symphony. It is magic, and it's as much fun to be in as it is to watch. I love my This Is Us family. Hi, guys. <laughs> Here are the nominees for Best Acting Ensemble, the casts of The Power of the Dog. Belfast. The Harder They Fall. Licorice Pizza. West Side Story. Don't Look Up. And the critic's choice is Belfast. Accepting on behalf of the ensemble is Jamie Dornan. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste whatever he said before. Just copy and paste whatever he said before. I think that's um, truly um, not expected and uh, truly unbelievable to receive this. Uh, I, critics are usually not very nice to me. So, uh, <laughs> so, so this is a, this is a change. Um, it doesn't actually say Belfast on this. Can I just make that clear? So this, this might not be right. Um, what a treat this was making this movie. As someone from Belfast, um, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of telling a story about a place that people don't really have a, big idea about um, and telling about the real people from that place, not seeing it through a politicized lens or a paramilitary lens, which is often the case in Belfast, seeing it through the eyes of a family, something we can all relate to and we need to relate to at the moment uh, for the people of Ukraine and these families that are going through the hardship. Um, Jesus, yeah, listen, uh, thank you, Dr. Kenneth Branagh for making all of this possible, for bringing this, uh, this crew together, for, for trusting us, we had the best time. It says, please wrap it up, but I'm going to let him talk. So thank you very much. Very short. <laughs> I'm just going to keep this really short and simple. Thank you so much, Critics' Choice Awards. This is too much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Who are the critics' choices for best supporting actor and actress in a comedy series? Ralph Macchio and Jacob Bertrand have the answer next. Plus, Carrie Mulligan, Lynn Manuel Miranda, and the cast of Pose, and Halle Berry, when the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards returns. They are the two stars of the hit series Cobra Kai. Here are Ralph Macchio and Jacob Bertrand. Jacob, I have an important lesson for when presenting at a prestigious show like this. Something you've always got to remember. I know, yeah, I know, Ralph, you've got all these lessons. But did you what? remember to check your plan? What? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sorry, I got you. Nice, got me there. Okay, you got me on that one. Uh, here's a real Hollywood lesson. Always find your light. What, am I not in it now? It's, um, yeah, it's just a little back. What? Back, 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 back. Keep going. Yeah, just a little to your left. That's perfect. Here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. Bowen Yang, Saturday Night Love. Ray Romano, Made for Love. Judy Gatwa, Sex Education. Harvey Guillen. What We Do in the Shadows. Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso. Brandon Scott Jones, Ghosts. And the critic's choice is Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso.
Right, I'm really not going to swear this time. Um, thank you uh, to the Critics' Choice Association. Uh, thank you to Warners and Apple and uh, Jason and Bill and Brendan and Joe Kelly for changing my life. Uh, look, let's be honest. I'm basically the most supported actor. Like, I don't do much. I'm just surrounded by an amazing cast. And, uh, and I would like to name them individually, but there's too many and it's one in the morning and people need to go to bed. But I, uh, let me at least say uh, Jason, who taught me everything, uh, Hannah, who I love, and I would like to give a special shout out to the person I did most of my scenes with this year, uh, the amazing Juno Temple. Um, <laughs> acting, acting, acting with Juno is like uh, doing a scene with uh, pure light. So uh, uh, with her. thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Cheers. And here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series. Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso. Hannah Einbinder, Hacks. Kristen Chenoweth, Schmigadoon. Molly Shannon, The Other Two. Josie Toda, Safe by the Bell. Cecily Strong, Saturday Night Live. And the critic's choice is... Hannah Waddingham, Ted Lasso. Hello. I am massively unprepared. I didn't think this was going to come round to me again. Critics' Choice Association, they, I'm not going to cry! I'm not going to cry! Thank you so much for recognising me again among these f***ing titans of women. My God, Molly Shannon. Molly Shannon, Kristen Chenoweth. Hello, hello, over there. Thank you so much, Apple, Warner Brothers. Honestly, I can't... I, I know I keep saying it, but this has changed my life. And to Jane Becker, one of the writers on Ted Lasso, I need you to know her name. She was responsible for our funeral episode. And thank you for sharing your grief with me and for me to make right with it. Thank you so, so much. I'm just over the moon. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, what a great speech. Listen, I know we're only half an hour into the show, but I got to say, Nicole, you are the best co-host I've ever had. Oh, well, I'm the only co-host you've ever had. This is true, but I feel like we make a great team. I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, thank you, Tay. Now give me some space, okay? You're making me look taken in front of some hot people like here in the pocket. Ooh, That's I my bad. Ooh. That's my Ooh. bad. Easy, Ooh. easy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, I can see a ring and I'm sad. <laughs> We've got more Critics' Choice Awards live, like Lynn manuel Miranda. More like love, Manuel Miranda. All right, so stay locked on the Critics' Choice Awards. <laughs> everybody what an amazing show so far am i right the winners oh they've been so gracious and so funny hey tay what's this i'm beatboxing please stop nicole what's up just stop why uh, we have a show to host see look i just beatbox and then she talks and then it's still a song. I no, just, I just... no, no, I do not consent to be in this song. Y'all okay? let her know I got the music in I got the music in me. Let her We'll take you to your room. Okay. I'm gonna go to my room. But I'm gonna sing all the way to my room. That was lovely. 
I love Che Diggs, y'all. Okay, he's the director of Tick, Tick, Boom and songwriter of Encanto, which both are nominated tonight. Ooh, and here's Lin-Manuel Miranda! This year, we witnessed several cinematic phenomena. Immensely talented actors were paired with some of the most electric characters to ever grace the film world. And those connections were so perfect, it was like catching lightning in a bottle six times over. And how privileged we are to watch the sparks fly. Here are the simply amazing nominees for Best Actress. Best Actress. Alana Haim, Licorice Pizza. You're talking about pinball machines. I'm a politician. Lady Gaga, House of Gucci. Do you see anything that would let you think that I would ever let anyone ruin my daughter's life? Nicole Kidman, being the Ricardos. Danny does jokes. Few people do it better. I do physical comedy. Kristen Stewart, Spencer. I told you to be the queen, Sergio. I'll be your mom. That's my job. Jessica Chastain, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. This is an emotional interview for me. I just met Steve, and it's like meeting him in person for the first time. Olivia Coleman, The Lost Daughter. I'm gonna cut your tongue. So I'm feeding you like peanuts. And the critics' choice is Jessica Chastain, The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Jessica couldn't be here tonight, so we will pass around the Critics' Choice Award like the Stanley Cup. Thank you. She was the Critics' Choice for Best Actress last year for her role in Promising Young Woman. Soon to be seen in the film, She Said and Spaceman. Here's Carrie Mulligan. Good evening, everyone. In recognizing the incredible, complex, and staggering performances by our Best Actor nominees tonight, we, for the most part, continue an age-old Hollywood tradition of rewarding men for acting like complete and utter bastards. <laughs> I can tell you, though, however, having auditioned over the years to play nearly all... all truly actually very lovely people and fairly normal which makes their performances this year even more impressive the nominees are best actor denzel washington the tragedy of Macbeth, nicholas cage pig andrew garfield tick tick boom peter dinklage Cyril, will smith king richard benedict cumberbatch the power of the dog. And the Critics' Choice Award goes to Will Smith. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I am here tonight with Venus and Serena and their sister Isha. Um, and I, I really just want to say to all of you, thank you for entrusting me with your story. What you were able to do and what your family was able to do inspired everyone in this room, everyone in this country and everyone around the world. You all define the American dream. You represent the best of what we all hope this world and this country can be. And I want to also share this and say to your mother, who 
for a lot of years took a really quiet role. And I love that we were able to show what your mother did to help create and mold and shape your family and to be able to show to the world the power of faith, the power of unity, the power of family, the power of discipline. And in the same way, I feel that your, your mother didn't, uh, she, she, your father didn't do it alone. It would be disingenuous for me to accept this role without acknowledging Anjanou Ellis. <laughs> Thank you, Anjanou. Uh, I, oh, please wrap up. Sorry. Best actor should get a little more time. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm here. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but but to the Williams family, um, thank you, thank you all so much for for the years of inspiration. Um, in studying your family and working hard to understand and deliver your story, I saw the secret, scary, hard places that you went out on that court and you smiled and you did your job. But Serena didn't smile all the time on the court, but, <laughs> but that was a part of it. That was a part of it. But thank you all for your story and uh, thank you all for, for this award. I am uh, honored and ecstatic to be able to do what I do for all of you. Thank you. When we return, the cast of Pose presents the awards for Best Supporting Actor and Actress in a Drama Series. Plus, Issa Rae presents the prestigious See Her Award to Halle Berry. The 27th Annual Critics' Choice Award continues after this. Now, all y'all know, know I enjoy dressing snappy and I enjoy cleaning up nice, but I can't compare to our next presenters. Last year, their series won Emmys for contemporary hairstyling, makeup, and costumes. For these stars from Pose, life is one fierce fashion show. Here are Dominic Jackson, India Moore, Angelica Ross, Haley Sahar, and Michaela J. Rodriguez. <laughs> so we are here to present the best supporting actor in a drama. Every nominee in this category has mastered their own crucial instrument. The drama face. The perfect drama face registers anger, but at the same time relies vulnerability. Right. The perfect drama face gives everything just the right amount of gravitas, like this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so clearly we've all mastered it. So, <laughs> here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor in a Drama. Best Supporting Actor in a Drama Series. Nicholas Braun, Succession. Billy Crudup, The Morning Show. Kieran Culkin, Succession. Justin Hartman, This Is Us. Matthew McFadden, Succession. Mandy Patinkin, The Good Fight. And the critic's choice is <laughs> Karen Culkin. Um, wow. Thanks. Shut up. Um, awful. 
I was just telling Jeremy how I really hope they don't say my name. I was really looking forward to that relief of not having to say anything. I have not prepared anything, um, so anything can come out. <laughs> so I don't know what to say here. Um, thanks, critics. Wow. Um, I'm going to say that Succession has just been a dream. Um, it's like the dream job had been spoiled rotten. Jesse Armstrong is kind of a genius. Um, all the writers on our show are just the best at what they do, I feel like, and they give me so much to work with. Um, all of our actors are so fantastic to work with. I love you, Snook, um, so much. Wish you could be here. And you too, Jay, shut up. <laughs> she hates when I single out Snook as someone uh, that I love to work with. Um, so Jay, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I, I think you are probably my favorite actor to do scenes with after Sarah Snook. <laughs> Fun fact, Snook's last name is actually pronounced Snook, but I just can't do that. Right? Uh, another fun fact, Matthew McFadden's uh, name is David. I'm just dropping bombs here. It's true. Look it up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just talking now. I'm just saying things and stuff. Uh, I, I'm going to say thanks to Casey Bloys and Fra uh, Francesca, Nora, everyone at HBO. It's been fantastic working with you guys. Like, really, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just dying up here right now. <laughs> So, yeah, please wrap it up. You're right. You, I should have done that like 30 seconds ago. I should have walked up here and said, thanks, and then walked out, because now I'm just making an ass of myself. But, uh, yeah, thanks. You're never going to do this for me again. Thank you. And now, the nominees for Best Supporting Actress. Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series. Sarah Snook, Succession. Audra McDonald, The Good Fight. Andrea Martin, Evil. J. Smith Cameron, Succession. Christine Lovey, Evil. Susan Kolechi Watson, This Is Us. And the critic's choice is... Come on, girl. Sarah Snook! <laughs> Come on, girl! Oh, good idea. Oh. Sarah, I know you're not here right now. I'm going to have this at the crib. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we honor the incredible Halle Berry with the See Her Award, plus Mayim Bialik, J.K. Simmons, Jamie Dornan, Kristen Wiig, and Jimmy Kimmel gives the Lifetime Achievement Award to Billy Crystal. This is the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. She is the co-creator and star of the Emmy-winning series, Insecure, nominated tonight for Best Actress in a Comedy Series. Here's Issa Rae. Um, before I read, I just want everybody to know the one I want the world to know that Critics' Choice only fed us hummus and wine, so I will try to read this. For the sixth year in a row, the Critics' Choice Association has partnered with See Her to recognize women in media whose work on and off screen has helped advance gender equality in entertainment. This is so important as gender bias persists throughout the content we consume. And See Her is leading the movement, it's working to ensure that women and girls are accurately portrayed in media and advertising, representing marketers, media organizations, and entertainment leaders. See Her and its partners are committed to creating content free of gender bias. This award goes to women who embody the movement and inspire all women and girls to see themselves and all the possibilities because we cannot underestimate the power of what it feels like to be seen in the content you consume. Take a look. We've been witnessing a movement. The privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. I belong. The idea of woman.
Hood is someone who sheds the perfect little box and owns their complexity. I belong. Our job is to question what we depict, how we depict them. Nobody is just one thing. We are all, all the things. I am grateful for the incredible women that have paved the way. I and I do see her, just like I see me. This year's honoree is Halle Berry. The first, the first and still the only black woman to ever win the Oscar for Best Actress, <laughs> where she played a grieving widow in Monsters Ball. Among the, among the many other honors she has won are a Peabody, two SAG Awards, six NAACP Image Awards, and an Emmy for her extraordinary performance in Introducing Dorothy Dandridge, which she also produced. She has played everything from a Bond girl in Die Another Day to the mutant superhero Storm in four X-Men movies. And she's been creating her own opportunities as a producer for over 20 years. And last year made her directorial debut with Bruised, about a black female MMA fire, fighter. Throughout her 30-year career, she has fought for herself and other women to be seen and heard. So let's take a look. Good evening, I'm Dorothy Dandridge. I'd like you to meet Aurora Monroe, also called Storm. My friends call me Jinx. I'm not what you think I am. You know, Brian used to say something all the time. Accept the good. Accept the good, Jerry. This is the girl I've been seeing. I wasn't alone. It's about the fact that you can't love me the way I deserve to be loved. That's what this is about. You don't love me, you don't love Jacqueline, you only love your damn self. I'm out of here. Look in the mirror. Look at my face. I'm his mother. You find her promiscuous? Whatever you hope to imply. They're gonna find you, okay, honey? We promise. You've got the best team of people in this whole city. Working to find you. Swing! Get your hands out of here! I'm all done! Come on, bro. Smile sweetly. And say very well, thank you. And yourself? That's all I wish you did. I'm offering you a second chance. You gonna take it? Yeah, I'm gonna take it. You know who that is? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the 2022 See Her Award recipient, Halle Berry! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Issa, I have to say thank you. You you have inspired me since the moment you showed up. You have rearranged the way we see ourselves as women of color on television and in the world. And I thank you from my heart. And thank you for being here for me tonight. Thank you. And thank you to the Critics' Choice um, and see her for this wonderful honor tonight. You know, the first time I read the script for Bruise, which was my directorial debut, I realized that it wasn't written for someone that looked like me. So I went to the producers and I said, why not me? Why can't it be a black woman? They said, why not? Later on, they told me, now go find a director. And then finally, I summoned the courage to say, why not me? <laughs> they said, why not? And then finally, when the film came out, I got the courage to ask someone what he thought of the movie. And he said, I have a hard time watching a woman get battered and beaten. It made me feel uncomfortable. 
And in that moment, I knew exactly why I had to tell this story. I knew exactly the power of the story because I said, if you had a hard time, if it made you uncomfortable watching that story, imagine being that woman living that story. This is the power of storytelling. It can raise our consciousness and help us think outside of ourselves and our individual circumstance. I realized we truly need to see each other's reality, no matter how uncomfortable it makes us, so that we might stop judging and stop pointing fingers, but rather find compassion and empathy for the others. Now, here's the thing. I've been in the business for 30 years, and I used to think that if I could play a part of a white man, that I was winning. But you know what? Want to know why that didn't work? Because if you didn't know, I'm not a white man. <laughs> so for those roles to work, they would have to be substantially changed. It would have to be written with the reality of my journey in all of its beauty and all of its pain. This is why I am so grateful to be standing and living in this moment where women are standing up and we are telling our own stories. Because you know why? We will write, we will produce, we will direct, and if we're brave enough, we'll star in it all at the same time. We will use our emotional intelligence and we will tell stories that don't fit preconceived notions. No, we will tell stories that see us fully in all our multitudes and contradictions because we are confident and we are scared. We are vulnerable and we are strong. We are beautiful and we are abused. We are everything and all of that and all at the same time. Because if we deny our complexity, then we deny our humanity. We won't always be pretty and we will never be perfect, but what we will be is always honest and true, no matter how uncomfortable that makes you. These are the stories we have to fight to tell, and these are the stories that the world needs to see. So to every little girl who feels unseen and unheard, this is our way of saying to you, we love you and we see you, and you deserve every good thing in this world. Thank you so very much. Up next, it's the race for the best actor in a comedy series. Plus, J.K. Simmons, Jamie Dornan, Kristen Wiig, and Jimmy Kimmel gives the Lifetime Achievement Award to Billy Crystal. This is the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards. She is an actress, director, writer, and PhD. Here from Call Me Cat is Critics' Choice Award winning actress, Maya Bialik. To our perfectly imperfect funny guys, the class clowns, the wisecrackers, the smart asses, the tension breakers, rule benders, and fart noise generators, tonight we salute you. Here are the nominees for Best Actor in a Comedy Series. Best Actor in a Comedy Series. Ian Armitage, Young Sheldon. Nicholas Holt, The Great. Steve Martin, Only Murders in the Building. Kay Van Milburn. What We Do in the Shadows, Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building. And the critic's choice is Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso. Jason couldn't be here tonight, so we will accept this critic's choice award on his behalf, me and this gentleman. Thank you. When we return, J.K. Simmons reveals the Critics' Choice for Best Actress in a Comedy Series, plus Jamie Dornan, Kristen Wiig, and the cast of Squid Game. And Billy Crystal accepts the Lifetime Achievement Award when we return. The 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards is brought to you by Febreze. Breathe happy.
He's an Oscar winner and Critics' Choice nominee tonight for his role in being the Ricardos. Here's J.K. Simmons. Hello. Here's a fun fact. All of the nominees for Best Actress in a Comedy Series have also performed in more dramatic offerings. This, of course, brings to mind the ongoing debate, which is more difficult, comedy or drama, because God knows being an actor is so, so difficult. <laughs> I think some actors might say drama, but the consensus is probably that comedy is more difficult, which makes these six women all the more remarkable because they make it look easy. Here are the nominees. Best Actress in a Comedy Series. Elle Fanny, The Great. Selena Gomez, Only Murders in the Building. Sandra Oh, The Chair. Issa Rae, Insecure. Jean Smart, Hacks. Renee Elise Goldsberry, Girls 5 Ever. And the critic's choice is Gene Smart. two of these oh my god this this role has been such a gift just a gift on a silver platter and i thank everyone at hbo max and at, and at universal television and uh, hannah einbinder half of this is yours uh our cast and our crew and my representatives but i i'm, I'm going to throw out most of my speech because i have to tell you something on friday uh well we have the most amazing showrunners jen stasky paul downs and lucia and yellow and they also they also created the show, and but Friday morning, our director, Lucia, uh, went into labor. So um, we kind of were making do on Friday, but she was literally at home on her computer, getting the feed, directing us between contractions. I kid you not, this woman is my idol. And yesterday, she and Paul Downs became parents for the very first time to a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> not only that, you'd have to you'd have to hate her if you didn't love her so much. Yesterday, she also won a DGA award for directing. <laughs> so, this is for Lucia and Paul and their little boy. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Please welcome creator, showrunner, and star of the Emmy award-winning A Black Lady Sketch Show, three-time Emmy nominee, Robin Thede. Oh, thank you so much. Now, before we continue with the show, I have a few announcements to make. There is a black Lamborghini with its lights on outside, license plate Slater 89. So that's either... Christian Slater or the fictional character Slater played by Mario Lopez on Saved by the Bell. I don't know, but get out there, one of you guys. Also, we are now three hours over, so in an effort to save some time, we're just going to speed through some other awards, okay? Here's some of tonight's other winners. Other Critics' Choice winners tonight include Best Comedy Special, Bo Burnham, Inside, Best Talk Show, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Best Movie Made for Television. Oslo. Best Animated Series. What If. Best Foreign Language Series. Squid Game. We'll be back with more Critics' Choice Awards, including Kristen Wiig, Jamie Dernan, and Annie Mumolo, right after this. Oh, 
Our next three presenters star together in the Best Comedy Movie nominee. Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Please welcome Kristen Wiig, Annie Mumolo, and Best Supporting Actor nominee tonight for Belfast, Jamie Dornan. <laughs> Jamie, you're you're here. We haven't seen you. Yeah, we, we have a seat for you. Barb and Star is a table. There's an empty seat. So when we're done, just just come sit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'm actually here for 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 a different different movie. Um. Yeah. What? You did another movie? I'm sorry. We we thought Barb and Star was your only movie. <laughs> No, I've actually been doing like TV and film for like a long time, and um, oh. I'm actually I'm actually nominated um, for another movie I did tonight. It's called um, it's called Belfast. Oh, oh right, he means like the shakes. Oh yeah, the shakes, like the wait, no, shakes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, that's slim fast. Okay. Right. I was like, that'd be a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine that oh movie? Oh my God, that movie. Oh my God, like the guy who invented like the recipe for the oh my powder. Gosh, he's having like affairs in his lab. But there were drugs. Yes, yeah, drugs involved. Drugs. I bet there's a lot of nudity in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's just get on with the um the winners, the um category. Not gee, sorry, no, I'm Are you sorry. Okay? Oh. Jamie, you alright? You alright? I'm just so tired. I've just flown in last night from another movie I'm doing in Italy. Um so I'm jet lagged, I'm tired, I'm sorry. Oh my God, your second movie is in Italy? <laughs> what, what, what is it? Um, it's actually a biopic. Oh, cool. Yeah, who's it about? Um, it's about the guy who invented Slim Fast. Oh. Yeah. Um, the movie's actually called Slim Fast. Oh. Yeah. I, I did not see that coming. No, no. no. Is there a lot of nudity in there? Yeah. 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 Here are the nominees for best comedy series. Um, the Great. Ted Lasso. Insecure. Only Murders in the Building. The other two? <laughs> Reservation dogs. <laughs> Hacks. What we do in the shadows. And the critic's choice is Ted Lasso. Accepting for Ted Lasso is Hannah Waddingham. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gosh, so much. This is just, from the critics, it's literally like Mummy and Daddy have said that you're <laughs> fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, but it would be remiss of us to not throw the focus to the most important thing that's happening in the world at the moment. Our beautiful brothers and sisters and for me more importantly the the babies in the ukraine that are being utterly decimated at the moment from this putrid putrid torrent of abuse please think of them as much as you can and give as much as you can we are so grateful for this but may this stop may this stop please thank you so much <laughs> Coming up, Jimmy Kimmel presents the Critics' Choice Lifetime Achievement Award to Billy Crystal, plus appearances from Sonequa Martin-Green and the cast of Squid Game when the 27th annual Critics' Choice Awards continue.
The Critics' Choice Association doesn't give out its Lifetime Achievement Award very often. Before tonight, it has only been given to three people, Clint Eastwood, Kevin Costner, and Eddie Murphy. To introduce this year's recipient, say hello to one of the funniest people I've ever had the pleasure of sitting with to shamelessly promote my career. He's the president of an organization I happen to be a member of, the Handsome Men's Club. Here is a Critics' Choice and two-time Emmy winner, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, three times, but you know. Wow, look at this room. Incredible. The Critics' Choice Awards are so much better than the People's Choice Awards. The people are kind of stupid. <laughs> I'm here tonight for uh, an important reason, and that is to pay tribute to an important man. The first gay man I ever saw on TV was Billy Crystal. <laughs> I know, it was a surprise to his wife, too, but... I'm serious, though. The first openly gay character on American television was Jody Dallas on Soap, which is a show remembered by... all the critics in this room... and no one else. Even though he was gay, Billy played Jody very straight. There were none of the affectations that became common in the 70s and the 80s. He was just a guy who happened to be gay, and while many might find it hard to imagine the Billy Crystal we know now playing a gay man, I think it was even harder to imagine him playing a Jew named Jody Dallas. <laughs> In 1978, Billy made his big screen debut playing the lead role in the movie Rabbit Test, directed by the late, great Joan Rivers, who, after working with Billy, never directed a movie again. <laughs> and then she died. Billy went on to become one of the great stand-up comics. Uh, those who saw him in the clubs in New York knew what a special talent he was, but the breadth of his brilliance was revealed to all of us when he joined the cast of Saturday Night Live, playing Fernando Lamas, Joe Franklin, Buddy Young Jr., Sammy Davis Jr., Prince Hervé Villachez, dozens of beloved characters, any one of which would most certainly get him canceled today. He had catchphrases, he had a hit song. One of the few non-yelling memories of my childhood was driving in a car with my family. The song You Look Marvelous came on the radio, AM, nothing but the best for the Kimmels. And when the song came on, we turned it up and we sang together like, a, like an ugly version of the Von Trapps. We love Billy's comedy album, from my seven-year-old little brother to my mom and dad, but me especially. I listened to that album at least a hundred times, and it, it was the We Don't Talk About Bruno of 1985. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Billy hit it big in the movies. He was Morty the Mime in This Is Spinal Tap. He was Miracle the Max in The Princess Bride. He was in Running Scared, When Harry Met Sally, City Slickers, Mr. Saturday Night, Forget Paris, Deconstructing Harry, Analyze This, Analyze That, Throw Mama from the Train, Monsters, Inc., and so many uh, others he asked me not to mention tonight. But <laughs> Billy is one of the most successful movie stars of all time, and he used that status well. He, Along with his friends Whoopi Goldberg and, and Robin Williams, Billy helped to raise more than $80 million as co-host and co-creator of Comic Relief. His track record is almost ridiculous. He, um, he directed the HBO movie 61. He won an Emmy for it. He won a Tony for his Broadway debut, 700 Sundays. He has a new Broadway show called Mr. Saturday Night. He acts, he writes, he directs, he tells jokes, he sings. He even dances when he has to. He has everything but looks. And... <laughs> I'm pretty proud of the fact that I hosted the Oscars twice. Billy hosted it nine times. Billy Crystal hosted the Oscars more times than Chevy Chase hosted the Chevy Chase show. <laughs> when, the, um, when the producers from the Academy asked me to host the Oscars, I called Billy, who I think did it better than anybody, to ask him for advice. And he gave me the best advice I got. He told me, don't worry too much about people watching TV at home. Make sure you get laughs in the room. And he was right. 
I focused on getting laughs in the room, and now there are almost no people watching on TV at home. <laughs> Maybe the most important thing about Billy for me selfishly is he's a great talk show guest. He is just so great at when Jay Leno um, forcibly took control of The Tonight Show back in 1993. <laughs> He asked who to be his first guest, Billy Crystal. And on Jay's final show, his third final show, he asked Billy Crystal to be his final guest because Billy doesn't disappoint. He is funny on a stage, he's funny on a movie set or just sitting in a chair, he's funny. Billy Crystal is one of the all-time greats and here's a video to prove that. My name is Billy Crystal, and I'm a comedian. Are you everywhere? I get around. You know, the other day, I took one of them uh, meat thermometers. Yeah. <laughs> and I just shoved it into my ear, you know? There's some music to comedy. But then I took one of them... Uh, Ball-peen hammocks. Right. <laughs> I just whacked it a few times right in there, you Boy, know? that must smart. I know. I hate when that happens. <laughs> so you're saying that a man can be friends with a woman he finds unattractive? No, you pretty much want to nail him, too. Hi, Curly. Tell anyone today? They ain't over yet. You look marvelous. <laughs> you don't have a cousin, Patty. You lied to me. Just hit the pillow. See how you feel. Feel better? Are you a practicing homosexual? I don't have to practice. I'm very good at it. <laughs> yes! 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 Oh! oh. Hey, you played a great game. Really, not only that, you're a very impressive young man. I swear, I've never seen a poppy seated one. Look, I'm literally, I'm literally on a roll. Don't be a greedy bastard. Those yuppie days are over and gone. Hello, New York. I'm Billy Cresso. Welcome to 12, 12, 12, the concert for Sandy Relief. Just promise me you'll go without me. All right, all right, I promise I'll go without you. You go without me? So tonight, enjoy yourselves, because nothing can take the sting out of the world's economic problems like watching millionaires present each other with golden statues. <laughs> Look what I did. I made a cow. He looks like you. I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. I'm lost. I'm... Help, help, help. I'm lost. I'll see you when I see you. Billy Crystal was the first celebrity I ever interviewed back in 1997, and 25 years later, I am proud to call him my best friend, even though he most certainly is not. I'm working on it, though. Please welcome and celebrate the Critics' Choice Lifetime Achievement Award honoree for 2022, the one and only Billy Crystal. Thank you, I so appreciate that. It is uh, delightful just to be anywhere. And um, thank you, Jimmy. This is a little um, embarrassing, but I had asked for Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> now what do I do? I wanna thank you for this, uh, for this wonderful uh, award to all the critics. This may be the first time we actually agree on something. And 
watching those clips just now made me think of one word, and that is uh, residuals. But <laughs> I had so many great moments, uh, and I want to thank all the people I had those moments with in every capacity writers, producers, directors, um, agents, managers. I've been so blessed to work with amazing people uh, my entire career, which is now in its 50th year. And, but wait, what's exciting about it is so much more to come. That's what's exciting at this point in my life. Tomorrow is my birthday. And, and I'm gonna be seven years old and as Jimmy mentioned, I'm about to open on a Broadway musical April 27th on Broadway uh, called Mr. Sad Night. And I can't remember when I worked harder and had more fun on a project. And I'm serious. I'll be 74 tomorrow. I actually just can't remember. And <laughs> funny people. Entertainers, we start by making our parents laugh first, our parents, our family, our friends. And I grew up in a time that was extraordinary. My older brothers and I, um, in the early 1950s, when television was this new frontier, it was the comics that settled it. The greatest comics of the day, Sid Caesar, Carl Reiner, Phil Silvers, Ernie Kovacs, Jonathan Winters. And watching them get laughs made me want to get laughs. So before I knew it, I'm standing on a coffee table imitating my relatives, who were these joyful souls, many of them from Rostov on the Don in Russia. My grandmothers were from Odessa and Kiev. They escaped the programs to come to America where they could live free from tyranny. And their laughter, the first laughs I ever got in my life, is the fuel that my engine is still burning today. So I thank you for this, but I dedicate this award to those amazing people in our living room back in Long Beach, Long Island, whose laughter and joy started this five-year-old boy on his way to this moment. And as we all have thought about and spoken about tonight, I pray that somehow, some way, there can be laughter and joy in that part of the world once again. This is a Lifetime Achievement Award, which is a little scary when they say they want to give it to you. Um, so I called my doctor and said, do they know something that I don't? <laughs> But to me, but to me, everybody, it's a creative achievement award. My lifetime achievement award is my family, the life I share with the beautiful and unselfish. <laughs> Let me just finish. I appreciate it. But they, they give me two minutes to thank you for a lifetime. And <laughs> my Janice and I will be married 52 years in June. And we've we produced this amazing amazing life together. Um, here's our cast in order of appearance. Um, <laughs> our beautiful daughters, Jennifer and Lindsay, their husbands, Mike and Howie, and our four wonderful grandchildren who are upstairs, Ella, Dylan, Hudson, and Griffin. Listen, I have loved what I've been uh, able to do, and I can't wait for what I'm about to do. And I leave you with this quote from the most amazing person I've ever met in my life and maybe one of the most amazing people you've ever had the joy to witness, uh, Muhammad Ali, who said, if my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. So let's keep believing, let's keep achieving because the world needs us. Thank you so much. When we return, Star Trek Discovery's Zaniqua Martin Green commands the stage, and the cast of Squid Game accepts the ultimate challenge, presenting at the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Award, here on the CW and TBS. She's made television history as the first black female Starfleet captain. Here is actor and producer Zaniqua Martin Green. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Thank you. The nominees for Best Actor in a Limited Series or Movie Made for Television dive headlong into the turbulent waters of complicated subject matter, medical crises and malpractice, 
the supernatural and superhero worlds, and perhaps the most confounding subject of all, romance. Each of their performances is riveting. And like the limited series and made-for-TV movies they're in, leaves you wanting more. Here are the nominees. Best actor in a limited series or movie made for television. Michael Keaton, Dopes. Ollie Alexander, It's a Sin. William Jackson Harper, Love Life. Paul Bettany, WandaVision. Joshua Jackson, Dr. Death. Hamish Linklater, Midnight Mass. And the critics' choices. Michael Keaton, Dope Sick. go to the bathroom. Hold on. <laughs> well, thanks very much. I'm going to make this quick. Here you go. Thanks very much. You know what? I love this time of year because it's springtime and it's award season and, you know, and you just can smell that fake humility out there. And the... <laughs> it's that fake sincerity that I met. Thanks very much. This is awfully, awfully nice. I appreciate it. I want to thank Hulu and Fox and, and, and Dar and Lori and Tony, and Wendy and Marnie and everyone and all those folks that are there who did this, uh, Danny and everybody. Honestly, just such a great thing. I want to uh, say that it feels a little funny to be accepting awards on the backs, it seems, on a, you know, a show about people who are going through the things they go through. Uh, this thing is based on the great Beth... Macy book, Dope Sick. And um, not to be too much of a downer, I just want to say that, you know, um, one of the things, we would stop in this cafe occasionally uh, um, and grab a cup of coffee or something, and one of the women that we talked to, a waitress who was well in her 70s, told me, we were talking about, she knew what, what the deal was, what we were filming, and, and she said, it told me how prevalent this, you know, the addiction rate and problems is down there in Appalachia. And I, one thing I'm proud about regarding this series is I think we really treated all those folks down there and in the world with real dignity. Um, and she told me, she said, you know, she was taking care of her grandson because, her granddaughter, I can't remember, because the parents who were in their 20s couldn't because they were incapacitated because of addiction. And I think of all those women like my mom and my sisters, um, they're tough, they're tough. And it's all, it, all, it seems to always fall to them, you know? I mean, look, dude, I'm a good dad. I do my best, you know? But it seems to always fall to the women. And God bless them, women like my sisters and my mom and all those folks down there, those grandmothers who are raising those babies because people can't. So uh, I, I made it through without being a big baby. But I'm proud of that and crying. And I just want to say thanks. You know, this is awfully nice. I don't know what else to say, except I'm, I'm very, very grateful. And the only thing I'll say about things in the world, which I've mentioned before, I want to, I want to say thank you to fellow actor, President Zelensky, and keep up. The fight, and there's only one way to change things environmentally, socially, and, and for some sort of racial justice and social justice. Two words, voting rights. Voting rights and voter suppression. Peace. Other Critics' Choice winners tonight include Best Costume Design, Jenny Bevan. Cruel. Best score. Hans Zim. Doom. Best song. No Time to Die. 
from no time to die. Best hair and makeup. The eyes of Tammy Faye. From the Critics' Choice winner and worldwide phenomenon that is Squid Game, here are Park Hae Su and SAG Award winners Lee Chung Jae and Chung Ho Yoon. Hello, good evening. Well, I've been told uh, that we only have uh, 30 seconds to present the best actress in a limited series. Hmm? But don't worry, if you fail at this task, the consequences will not be as serious as speed goal. But still, presenting on live TV is just about as scary as speed game. <laughs> Here are the nominees. Best actress in a limited series or movie made for television. Cynthia Arrivo, genius, Aretha. Elizabeth Olsen, WandaVision, Kate Winslet, Mayor of East Town, Tussauds and Baby, The Underground Railroad, Margaret Qualley, May, Danielle Brooks, Robin Roberts presents Mahalia. And the critic choice is Kate Winslet. <laughs> Kate couldn't be here tonight, so we will accept this Critics' Choice Awards on her behalf. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Coming up, the awards for Best Limited Series and Best Actress and Actor in a Drama Series, plus Venus and Serena Williams, and the awards for Best Director and Best Picture, when we return. Please welcome our next presenter. She stars in the new crime thriller, The Outfit, which premieres in movie theaters this week. Here is Zoe Deutsch. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to present the award for Best Limited Series. These nominees navigated some of the most intriguing storylines of the year, spellbinding plots, great writing and acting, and unusual locations Death, Dope Set, Maid, Mayor of Easttown, It's a Sin, WandaVision, Midnight Mass, The Underground Railroad. And the critic's choice is Mayor of East Town. <laughs> Accepting for Mayor of East Town is executive producer Mark Voiball. I've come prepared, my producer. Um, wow, thank you. Thank you, critics uh, and everyone. Um, on behalf of our brilliant producer, Brad Inglesby, um, our producers, of course, our unbelievable cast, um, our studio whip, um, we'd like to thank the critics that got us up here on stage. <clears throat> Sorry, a bit nervous. Um, uh, and thanks to, uh, and also to applaud our fellow nominees uh, for making one of the best years of television under the most unbelievable circumstances. Uh, thank you to everyone at HBO, Casey Boyce, Francesca Orsi, uh, dear Nora Skinner, Zach Emchelin, Tal Asad, Angela Tarantino, um, your world-class uh, teams, you are the gold standard. Uh, Mr. Zaslav, everyone at HBO deserves big, big raises. Uh, to the incandescent Kate Winslet, uh, our mayor, uh, our North Star, 
Thank you for your brilliance. To our tremendous cast and crew in Delco and the families that supported you, you literally made, uh, risk your lives to make the show. This is yours. Lastly, we dedicate this award to the mothers out there because we certainly put you through the hell in our show. We set out to make our story about the invaluable lessons your mothers, you mothers have taught us, specifically mercy and compassion, things we need more than ever in the world right now. I love you, Lola. And to the most beautiful mother out there, my wife, Megan Colligan, let's go dancing in the light. I love you. Other Critics' Choice winners tonight include Best Production Design, Patrice Burmet, Susanna Sippers, Dune. Best Cinematography, Ari Wagner, The Power of the Dog. Best Editing, Sarah Brochar and Michael Kahn, West Side Story. Best Original Screenplay, Kenneth Branagh, Belfast. Best Adapted Screenplay, Jane Campion, The Power of the Dog. Here is TBS's Chad Nassim Pedrad, and from TNT's Animal Kingdom, Sean Hatosi. This year's nominees for Best Actress in a Drama Series have captured our attention by portraying complex women of substance. Doctors, lawyers, caregivers, survivors. And now, in honor of Women's History Month, let's pit these five women against each other. Here are the nominees for Best Actress in a Drama Series. Best Actress in a Drama Series. Uzo Aduba, In Treatment. Kiara O'Reilly, Cruel Summer. Christine Baranski, The Good Fight. MJ Rodriguez, Pose. Melanie Linsky, Yellow Jackets. Katja Herbers, Evil. And the critic's choice is Melanie Linsky. Linsky. Yellow, Yellow jacket. jacket. Okay, sorry. I really wasn't expecting this. I'm going to be really bad um, at this speech. Um, there's so many amazing women in this category. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm mentioned alongside you. Oh my gosh, the beautiful cast of our show. Oh. I, they're the most talented group of people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Sophie and Elise, you did about 70% of the work for me. Playing young Shauna, you're a miracle and I love you. You're all amazing. All my wonderful friends who I got to work alongside, thank you. Um, I feel like I'm gonna faint, but I hope I don't. Um, Ashley and Bart and Jonathan and Karen, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, thank you for letting me be exactly as I am, not asking me to change anything or do anything different. Um, it means a lot, it's meaningful. Um, gosh, thank you, um, Showtime and E1. I have the greatest agent in the world, Rhonda Price. She wow. believes in me. She's made about zero dollars from me for, <laughs> for a long time now. So thank you for encouraging me to make good choices. Um, <laughs> it's true. Sorry, sorry, Rhonda. Um, uh, my, please wrap it up. Yes, exactly, yes. I know, um, I'm forgetting everything. My husband, Jason, the love of my life, the greatest support, um, our daughter, Kaikatea, I love you both so much. Um, the most important person I think I have to thank and then I'm finished is my nanny, Sally. Um, <laughs> I love her. 
she's she's an absolute angel. She allows she's with my child and my child is safe and taken care of and she allows me to go and do my work and she's just thank you, Sally. I love you so much. I thank you. Okay. From the new CW series, Naomi, here's its star, Cassie Walthall, and its creator, Academy Award nominee and two-time Emmy winner, Ava, Ava DuVernay. These next talented nominees play captivating characters who pull you into their wildest dreams. Here are the dreamy and dynamic nominees for Best Actor in a Drama Series. Best Actor in a Drama Series. Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us. Jeremy Strong, Succession. Billy Porter, Pose. Lee Jung Jae, Squid Game. Mike Coulter, Evil. Brian Cox, Succession. And the critic's choice is... Lee Jung Jae, Squid Game. Thank you, God. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Critics' Choice Awards and everyone who loved and supported the Squid Game. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, I can't express how wonderful I am. <laughs> thank you, Netflix. <laughs> thank you, Squid Game team. Thank you. There is no place I would rather be than here at the Critics' Choice Awards. Not even Mario Lopez's after party? There is one place I would rather be than here at the Critics' Choice Awards. Oh, Nicole, perfect. We'll be honoring more of Hollywood's finest when we come back. Here are two sisters who have between them won 62 Grand Slam tennis titles and eight Olympic gold medals. Ladies and gentlemen, the executive producers of King Richard, Venus and Serena Williams. Everyone loved, loved me, but, that, <laughs> but they love you too. <laughs> I mean, what an evening. This is so much different than a tennis tournament. Everyone's much better dressed than that tournament. Yeah, I have to say. I agree. What an evening. And first of all, we'd like to th take a moment to thank the Critics' Choice for recognition of our film, King Richard has received. To watch our story on the big screen is one of the most special experiences of our lives. And what an amazing job by all the actors. Andrew New Ellis perfectly portrayed our mother like you wouldn't believe. Like you wouldn't believe. And Sanaya Sydney, you realize these two girls, the Demi Singleton, they learned to play tennis, which is not easy. Sometimes I don't know how to play tennis. You two nailed the young us in the chemistry they had between us as sisters. It, it, it was amazing. Yeah. And what can we say about Will Smith? I don't think, <laughs> I don't think there could have been a better tribute to our father um, than the performance that you delivered. Will, thank you. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, now on to more amazing performances that we all enjoyed over the last year. And here are the nominees for the best drama series. Pose. <laughs> Evil. The Good Fight. Squid Game. Succession. Yellow Jacket. This is us. For all mankind. And the critic's choice is succession. Accepting for succession is executive producer Scott Ferguson. Thank you. Thank you, critics. Um, and thank you all. Uh, my gratitude for uh, doing this uh, wonderful show begins and ends with our uh, genius showrunner, Jesse Armstrong. <laughs> Jesse's not here tonight because he's in London working on season four. So uh, looking forward to that. And not only is he a world-class showrunner, he's a world-class human being. And it's been a joy working on the uh, show with this group with me. Even though they don't seem so nice on the show, they're really a wonderful group. Uh, best uh, cast and crew I've ever worked with. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank my uh, our, our historic directing team who just swept the Directors Guild nominations last night and then led by Mark Mylod and Adam McKay who uh, did our pilot and set the tone. I also want to thank my producing partners, Frank Rich, Kevin Messick, and Jane Tranter. And um, we wouldn't be here without HBO. Um, the leadership of Casey Bloys, Franny Orsi, and uh, Nora Skinner. You know, as good as we are and we're good, they make us better. And it, it's just fantastic to work with this group. Um, and, you know, we have a world-class crew. Um, thousands of people, when you count background artists and the technicians and the department's heads, and um, New York and Italy, and uh, they made it great in a world of a pandemic, and th that was a credit to all of them. And um, finally, thank you, critics. Uh, you know, it's an honor to be uh, honored by writers when we're led by such great writers and Jesse and his geniuses in London. So thank you very much, and um, thank you. Other Critics' Choice winners tonight include Best Animated Feature, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Best Foreign Language Film, Drive My Car. Best Visual Effects, Doom. Best Comedy, Licorice Pizza. Coming up, Taika Waititi presents the Critics' Choice for Best Director and still to come, the award for Best Picture when the 27th Annual Critics' Choice Awards returns. Here's Academy Award-winning filmmaker, actor, and co-creator of the nominated comedy series Reservation Dogs and his latest series, Our Flag Means Death. Taika Waititi. Hello. Oh, hey. uh, hi. Yeah, okay, good. Excellent. All right. There it is. Um, shh. This is going to be really good. Mm. 
this year's list of nominations for Best Director Not even finished. This year, this of the nomination for best director boasts extraordinary international talent. International talent with nominees from such international places like the United States of America. Finally, um, and also Ireland, Mexico, Canada, and all right. Uh, and also my very own home country, a place that you all really, you all want to move to, but we don't want you. New Zealand. I keep hearing this, but you're like, oh, can't wait to move to New Zealand. We don't want you. We saw what you did to this place. Nah, you made that bed. Um, okay, that's it. Those are the jokes. Here are the nominees. Best Director. Paul Thomas Anderson, Licorice Pizza. No gas going to Caro, Steve-O! Kenneth Branagh, Belfast. Women are very mysterious. And women can smash your face in two, mister. Your granny's become less mysterious over the years. Jane Campion, The Power of the Dog. I wonder what little lady made these. Actually, I did, sir. Steven Spielberg, West Side Story. Tonight, tonight, it all begun tonight. Denis Villeneuve, Doom. Whoa! Whoa. Guillermo del Toro, Nightmare Alley. You're a small, small man. You don't fool people, Stan. Okay. And the critic's choice is Jane Campion. Thank you, thank you, Taika. Thank you, Critics' Choice. And um, it's, uh, it's absolutely uh, stunning to be here tonight amongst so many incredible women. <laughs> Hal Berry, you have already uh, done my speech. So, um, and, and, and really killed it, I loved it. You're, you're absolutely brilliant. And Venus and Serena, what an honor to be in the room with you. <laughs> I've taken up tennis. <laughs> I truly have. And Will, if you want to come over and give me lessons. <laughs> I would truly love it. <laughs> I actually had to stop playing because I've got tennis elbow. <laughs> I'd also just like to uh, give my love out to my fellow, 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 the guys. <laughs> The nominees and and you know Serena and Venus, you are such marvels. However, you do not play against the guys <laughs> like I have to. <laughs> Kirsten Dunst, you're a doll. I love you. Jesse Plemons is the cat that's still licking his lips for being with you. <laughs> Benedict, you're not here. I love you to pieces. 
and Cody Smith McPhee and my gorgeous producers, one of them's here, Roger Frappier. And, <laughs> and I just really want to say, uh, thank Netflix for standing up so proud for us and really helping us during the pandemic and um, caring about this film, caring about me. Thank you. There's only one more award to hand out, the Critics' Choice for Best Picture. Find out who the winner is coming up next. For our final award of the night, here is the coach of the Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams, Sean McVay, and his fiance, Veronica Komen. We are honored to present the Critics' Choice for Best Picture. Before we announce the nominees, we'd like to take a moment to talk about what's on all of our minds. Veronica's home country, Ukraine. I proudly stand with my fellow Ukrainians and I admire their strength. Um, they have faced unimaginable adversity with such profound grace and bravery. Their fight and the way they have united the world is truly inspiring. There is no place in our world for this kind of violence and our prayers go out to all the lives that have been lost. Even in the darkest times, the human spirit endures. There's a lot to be said for entertaining people. Sometimes it's the only thing they've got. All of you in this room have so much to give with that entertainment that you can provide. Here are the nominees for Best Picture. Best Picture. Belfast. Coda. Don't Look Up. Doom, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, Tick Tick Boom, West Side Story. And the critics' choice for the best picture is. The power of the dog. Right. Accepting for power of the dog is d director, writer, producer, Jane Campion. This is such an honor to be nominated amongst those 10 fabulous movies this year. I have the greatest respect for the producers and the director in this room. This journey started for me eight years ago when I optioned uh, the right of the book, The Power of the Dog, but the movie existed only the moment I met the great writer and director, Jane Campion. <laughs> Jane, your vision has reached so many people in the world since your movie premiere at uh, uh, the Venice Film Festival, where you won the uh, Silver Lion for Best Director. We are really grateful to our partner at Netflix, Ted Sarandos, Scott Stuber, Lisa Nishimura. You are being with us throughout this movie and during the pandemic. Jane, making the movie with you is the highlight of my life. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the other producers, particularly Tanya Segechian, who was every day and holding me together and just enjoying it, making it collaborative, making it um, a project that enriched our friendship and enriched the project too. Uh, Tanya Sagetian, she's a legend. And also Seesaw, Emile Sherman and Ian Canning, they're my 
friends, we, we uh, worked together on Top of the Lake, which is a little TV series that some of you might have seen. <laughs> and, um, and, and now this. We are so proud and so grateful to the Critics' Choice Awards for choosing us. I mean, I've still got some PTSD from uh, critics <laughs> going back to earlier in my career. <laughs> Ouch, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> some, some very deep wounds, but I've also been... <laughs> I've also been really championed by them, and, um, you know, they're very powerful, and we all know it because uh, we're all afraid, too afraid to read them. <laughs> um, I don't know, this is a, you know... I'm like the grandmother of the women's movement in film now. 